Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, in the clear night sky, the planet Venus glowed warmly. The observatory was hot. Ernest Cosgrove, seated in his shirt sleeves before the large telescope, paused in his work to wipe his brow with a clean handkerchief. In his early twenties, with a mop of black hair falling into his eyes, he had an expression of keen concentration on his lean face. He made a couple of notes on a pad and chewed reflectively on a half-finished beef sandwich. Returning to his work, he adjusted the focus of the camera attachment and pressed the button. Mm, that should do it. Whew, it's hot. On the tray, next to the plate with the sandwich, was a glass of beer, two-thirds full. A heavy froth clung to the sides of the glass. The bubbles in the beer kept rising. Cosgrove, intent upon his work, hardly noticed the strange noise that began to fill the room. He reached out for the beer glass, touched it, and reacted with a sharp cry of pain. Ah! The liquid in the glass was boiling. The reverberating sound became louder. Cosgrove stared at the glass incredulously. There was a sudden sharp explosion. Ah! Cosgrove was knocked from his chair. He lay sprawled in a crumpled heap under the telescope. His black hair had quite suddenly turned snowy white. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Field, The Avengers. Many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. Now tried it. And it works beautifully. I tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Since mm -hmm. then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Walls Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's on inside. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're Walls Pink Pussycat now. <laughs> Episode one of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel start seeing stars and find that some amateur astronomers are getting invitations from Venus with love. John Steed and Emma Peel were celebrating, celebrating having nothing at all to do. It was a very welcome change, and one that they both knew wouldn't last all that long. They dined in the country, and returning to town on this very hot night, they'd found a pleasant spot on a roof garden restaurant for a final nightcap. Splendid night, Steve. Starry, Miss Peel, starry. I was, uh, meaning the evening's entertainment. Well, you, Mrs. Peel, starry. Thank you. Another glass of wine? Oh, I don't think so, thank you. Just how long will this last? Usually until morning. Trouble's bound to crop up sooner or later. It always does. I'd prefer it to be later. Oh, look, a shooting star. See it? 
They always seem to get away from me. Sure it wasn't imagination? No. It was a meteorite, all right. Well, life is filled with unidentified objects. Uh, Mr. Steve. And you're not one of them, Steve. A telephone call for you, Mr. Steve. How the devil could anyone know that I'm here? Well, they must know your horns. You better take it. It doesn't have to be trouble. But of course it was. It was Mother. And a request that Steed stop stargazing with Mrs. Peel and hurry over to Cosgrove's observatory. Nothing had been touched except that the body of Ernest Cosgrove had been delicately covered with a sheet. Steed turned the corner back with the end of his umbrella. Hmm. That's young Cosgrove, all right. Did he trip or was he pushed? Neither, it seems. Not a mark on him. Was he important? Up and coming, according to Mother. Worked in the war ministry. One of the brighter young lads. Young? With snow white hair? He looks about... About 60. Not, though. Half that age. Any idea what he was working on? Stargazing in general. And from these notes, observing Venus in particular. Seems to have been photographing the planet. Here, look. Hmm. They're fogged. Yeah, so am I at the moment. A young man in the war ministry takes up astronomy. Dies with no apparent signs of violence, and his hair goes white. Now, what's this? Venus, our sister planet. And written inside Sir Frederick Hadley. Well, I suppose he'd better be our next step. Very curious death, Steve, as you say. Is there anyone like this? So far, Mrs. Peel. So far. <laughs> It didn't take long to trace the home of Sir Frederick Hadley. He wasn't in bed. In fact, he was sitting in his study. A room that reflected a man of means. A mass of books, charts and diagrams covered the floor and the walls. From the open window poked the head of a telescope. Sir Frederick accepted the telephone call from Steed, assured him that he would be available for an interview at any time, and returned to his work. He focused the telescope on Venus and pressed the button marked automatic. The camera started clicking. Sir Frederick hummed softly to himself and poured out a whiskey and soda. <laughs> At that moment, John Steed and Emma Peel arrived. Sir Frederick reached out a hand and released the door catch, saying into the speaker, Come in. Find your own way up. Not bothering to get to his feet, he reached out for his whiskey. The glass was burning hot, the liquid boiling. He let it go with a yell. Ah! The room seemed suddenly filled with noise. Ah! Just too late, Steed. <sighs> too late, Mrs. Peel. Dead? At least we know the exact time. A matter of seconds ago, we both heard his voice telling us to come in. I also heard something else. Curious sort of whining noise. Unusual sound. Almost like something from outer space. Has Sir Frederick always had white hair? Can't say. Manner of death is identical to Cosgrove's. We know there must have been a connection between them. They're both keen astronomers. Mrs. Peel moved over to the telescope and peered through it. Both had their eyes on Venus, too. Both filming at the same time, the time of death. I think we might take that roll of film and have it developed. Hmm. You think it might show some bug-eyed monster in a flying saucer? Well, whatever he was looking at shouldn't have frightened him to death. From the little I know of Hadley, he was a remarkably tough business tycoon. Steed and Mrs. Peel made a thorough search of the study. He seems to have strange pen friends. No? This letter. Dear Freddy, had a message from Venus. Next meeting, Friday the 13th. Ominous? Is it signed? Yes, Bert. And a card. Bert Smith Chimney Sweep. 24-hour service, anytime, anywhere. 11 Hembridge Road, London. Anytime, anywhere. Well, that gives you a nice task in the morning, doesn't it, Mrs. Peel? Mm. I'll tidy up in here and get the films developed. You find out where Mr. Smith is sweeping and what he knows about that message from Venus. There's got to be a connection somewhere along the line. Mrs. Peel found that Bert Smith was working at a house in the country. A large house with many large chimneys. The owner was out, 
wisely leaving everything covered with dust sheets. Mr. Smith turned out to be a happy chimney sweep. Sweep all your troubles away. Mr. Smith! Sweet Hello there! Oh, Mr. Baby. Smith! Hello there! Mr. Smith's begrimed face appeared from under a plastic sheet which covered the open grate. Anyone call? He made a full entrance into the room with a cloud of soot. <laughs> oh, good morning. I was looking for Bert Smith. Oh, then look no further, dear lady, for I am he. Mr. Smith doffed a filthy old cap with an elegant flourish. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Peel, Mrs. Emma Peel. How do you do? Mr. Smith extended a grimy hand, then withdrew it apologetically. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. And wiped it with a brush from his pocket. They shook hands. You appear to be somewhat startled. I am rather. Frankly, when I read your card, I didn't expect ah, it. Ah, gentlemen. <laughs> the name that fooled you, Bert Smith? <laughs> well, actually, see, it's Bertram Fortescue Winthrop Smythe, to be absolutely correct. I had to change it, of course. Of course. Oh, firstly, it was far too long to print on the card. Just didn't go on. And more important, such a name is a, a terrible disadvantage in this business. Oh. Of course. Mm. I, who ever heard of anyone having their chimney swept by a Fortescue Winthrop smile? Oh, indeed. It's sheer prejudice, Mrs. Beale. They'll have me in for cocktails, but if I ever go near their chimneys... You're out? Ostracized. Social death. Quite. Terribly unfair, too. After all, sweeping chimneys is all I'm fitted for. It's the only thing I know. Fact. Family tradition. Man and boy, we've been chasing up chimneys since William the Conqueror. Sir Matthew Fortescue Winthrop Smythe was actually knighted for services rendered to Queen Anne's flu. But, in Dalion, <laughs> dear lady, how ill-mannered of me. I, I didn't ask your business here. Is it a maladjusted smokestack? I hope not. A bothersome burner, perhaps? Actually, it's Sir Frederick Hadley. Old Freddy Hadders, ah, huh? <laughs> You're a friend of his. I've met him in more of a professional capacity. Professional? Ah, then you must be interested in astronomy. How perfectly marvellous. Then we are in sympathy. We are? I, I mean, we are. Well, naturally. Astronomy is my second love. After chimneys, of course. But the two things go hand in hand, really. After all, in my position, sweeping chimneys, the thing I see most of is the sky. Glinting away at the top of a brick stack, a, a long flue or a triple stack. A tiny patch of sky up there. What's more natural than that I should become interested in astronomy? Oh, it had to happen. Are you going to become a member of the BVS? BVS? We all are, you know, all the enthusiasts. That reminds me, I'll probably on watching duty tonight. Watching what? Venus, of course. Uh, for the BVS. The British Venusian Society. Oh, dear lady, I insist that you join. And it'll change your whole life. You'll never be the same again. Careful, Mrs. Peel. You could end up with white hair, too. Gosh, Mary, you're lucky to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Dual. Dual? Yes, Dual, the self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Dual cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Dual lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Dual, you don't have to worry about polishing. No, Dual cleans and polishes in one go. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adenold, say... I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out. 
Sparklessly clean. Yes, Omo cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>